Hello, my name is Chris Hondel. I'm one of the partners in Finale Inventory. And in this video, I'm going to show you editing taxes, discounts, and fees on sales orders. Uh, these taxes, discounts, and fees flow through to all the invoicing and business reporting modules as well, but they're edited on the sales order. So first, we've got a sales order here with five items. I'm going to, uh, the total is $1,000, and we don't have any fees or discounts added. So I'm going to click this blue link to go to the screen where these are edited. You'll note it comes up instantaneously. For the tax, the taxes are pre-configured, so I will select a sales tax uh, based on the ones that I'd set up. These are all done on in the application settings area, and they're done for each company gets set up uh, separately. So you can just uh, show at the end of the video how that's going to be configured. I then can add a discounter fee. We'll add two discounter fee lines. I can just manually enter a fee. So if this was just a uh, feel good, or how about this is a uh, uh, rebate of some sort, uh, spot rebate, and we're just going to give them $125 just on the spot we agreed to. Or alternatively, I can select an existing fee that I'd set up, say for example a credit fee, we always charge 2.5% for credit, that gets calculated out. I'll add another fee here, uh, an example of a non-taxable fee, we'll add shipping, shipping is often not taxable. Uh, this is set up as a preset so that they can all be grouped and reported together reliably but it gets entered in this case it's been set up to get entered on each order so our shipping fee is 123.45 and that fee as you'll note is not taxable the other ones are taxable when we go back to the sales order screen now you'll see at the bottom of the screen here each of the fees we've got my spot rebate that I just entered uh, my credit fee oh, I'd forgotten the uh, spot rebate fee needs to be negative well it's easy to change click here click here. A uh, negative number means it's a discount. Positive number means it's a fee. So let me go back. That was quickly changed. Okay, much better. Now we get $125 off for the rebate. My credit fee is $25.48 for taxable subtotal $919.50. Apply my sales tax. Shipping is after sales tax for the grand total. If I clear one of these items out, you'll note all of the totals and percentage-based amounts, the tax and the credit fee will update uh, as I Immediately, if I just click on that, I zero that out, hit return, you know, everything has no update. All right, and that appears on the sales order. So I'm just going to save, and it will print the sales order. And there it is. So you see an entire, you see the entire sales order. Just zoom in, and there's our subtotals. Comes down to here. I got my rebate, my credit fee, the taxable subtotal line, sales tax calculated sales tax, the shipping, and then the total amount, just over $1,000 for this customer. So I'd mentioned that the fees are set up in application settings so that you can have presets that are configured. Uh, you can easily get there from here. Just click on this link, which is on that screen. That directly takes me into the configuration page where they're configured. I can either rename a fee. So this was a brokerage fee. Let's just say we want to name the broker. This is, you know, LLT. LLT, uh, LLT broker fee. I suppose we separately want to add another fee. I just pick a blank line. I type SPBY broker, and then those are up. And let's suppose they're both not taxable. So it's very easy to set them up. I'm just typing into this table and adding them. I hit save now. I hit the back button, and immediately that fee is now available to be applied. You can, of course, use uh, user access control options in Finale to prevent uh, some uh, users uh, prevent users from modifying the preset fees. And that's one of the options in the user access control. For taxes, it's similar. We click on here, we get our tax configuration. Tax in Finale is pretty powerful. You can create individual tax items as well as aggregate or group tax items. And so what that's for is if you're in a situation where you're collecting tax from multiple levels of government, for example, city, county, and state, and need to keep that information separated while still showing a single line on the invoice. You can create an aggregate tax item, for example, Santa Clara County sales tax, which is a combination of my Santa Clara County tax and my California sales tax. Those two refer to the California sales tax and the Santa Clara County sales tax here. So on the invoice, it's going to come up as 6.875%, but I'm going to be tracking each of those amounts separately so that uh, when it comes time to pay my taxes, I can pay the correct amount to the correct jurisdictions. And then there is a further area at the bottom here for the tax authority. So this represents individual jurisdictions. For example, if you have 
um, multiple different taxes, uh, tax items for different uh, situations that you want to group. And you can report on each of the combinations of uh, authorities and tax items for your tax reporting. So, but that's the topic for another video, kind of the depths of that, or you can give us a call and we'll help you, help you set it up. I'm going to come back to this screen where we are, where we are. And that wraps up this video.